In the past, if you were sick, you could have your loved ones around you for comfort. But now, with COVID-19, you're isolated alone. You're scared out of your mind. You've gotten worse over a very short amount of time. You've got the feeling of thousands of needles pushing into your chest and you can't breathe. And then, you're gone. This is the unimaginable way that more than 1.5 million people have been ripped from life since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. But Thailand, with a population of 69 million, has had less than 4,000 cases and only 60 deaths. How has Thailand done it? The country had been overrun with Chinese tourists at the time of the outbreak. How have they been able to contain and maintain these amazingly low statistics? And are there lessons that other countries can learn from? Let's look at the COVID-19 timeline in Thailand. In December 2019 and the early weeks of 2020, the first outbreak of Wuhan Hospital in China. At the end of the second week of January, it was acknowledged that there was a new virus and the COVID pandemic had begun. A small group of patients had developed fevers and breathing problems and were not responding to standard flu treatments. January 6, 2020, the Thai media reported a pneumonia-like outbreak in Wuhan, China. At least 59 patients have been placed under observation. January 8, 2020, a Thai airport official takes a female passenger from Wuhan aside. She had a runny nose, sore throat, and high temperature. This was the first new case of the new coronavirus pneumonia outside of China. January 11, 2020, Dr. Surapon, who at first had noticed the similarities to the Wuhan pneumonia, compared her sequence with, the doc with Dr. Zhang from the Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center and found that it was a 100% match, confirming that the Chinese patient in Thailand had the same virus detected in Wuhan. January 13, 2020, the World Health Organization announced that Thailand had a confirmed case of the virus. It was the first recorded death outside of China. The next day, according to Associated Press, a confidential teleconference was held where China's top health official told the country to prepare for a pandemic describing it as the most severe challenge since SARS in 2003. Chinese CDC staff across China initiated screenings, isolations, and testing for cases of the novel coronavirus. They found hundreds. January 30, 2020. The World Health Organization finally declares an international health emergency. January 31, 2020, New Year's Eve. The first locally transmitted case of the coronavirus is recorded. The infected individual was a local taxi driver who had no records of traveling to China and was thus suspected of having been infected by a Chinese tourist he picked up, making this the first case of human-to-human -human virus transmission within the country. The taxi driver was reported to have come into contact with at least 13 other individuals, mostly family members, before seeking treatment. The other cases were Chinese nationals. March 2020. Two clusters of cases are detected in Bangkok. March 17, 2020. Thailand closes high-risk venues and businesses. March 20, 2020. Thailand declares a state of emergency. It's one of the mysteries of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's take a look at some of the possible answers. Number one, the numbers are not accurate, they're underreported. If the numbers were underreported, we would see a much higher number of deaths in the thousands. Those kind of numbers would be almost impossible to hide. So we have to rule that out. Speaking at the Foreign Correspondents Club in Thailand and Bangkok, Matthew Tovastin, Southeast Asia editor for Reuters, stated, in Jakarta, by the end of March, we found 1,000 more burials than usual since the records began. Coronavirus was the only clear explanation. 
We did the same thing in Thailand and we didn't find a large number of unexplained deaths. Number two, unknown mitigating reasons. Thai culture and societal norms do not include hugging and handshaking. Thai's why, where you clasp both hands in front of you and bend slightly. This originated to show that you weren't yielding a weapon. In this case, replacing hugging and handshaking and kisses on the cheek, the Thai why may very well be one of the reasons for the reduced number of coronavirus cases. Another factor is that the Thai people have grown accustomed to wearing face masks to help mitigate the bad air quality that has been drifting across the country for many years. So implementing the wearing of masks was not that far out of the norm. Number three, a more general spirit of cooperation. Another part of the Thai culture and societal norms dictate the following of the orders of superiors. Therefore, changes are much more easily implemented and the response much more successful. It was believed that controlling an epidemic required 90% or better cooperation from the population and that would be required to ensure success. Relieved that they have exceeded the numbers needed for successful control. Number four, government efficiency. Tanarak Klipat, Deputy Director General of the Department of Disease Control, was also keen to assert that the government and Thailand's robust health security system were mostly responsible for the kingdom's success. In particular, he cited the willingness of politicians to let health experts call the shots and the coordination between government departments as well as provincial and local bodies across the country. The clarity of communication to the public about how to avoid the disease transmission and the universal precaution attitude, assuming that you and everyone else has the disease until proven otherwise. Five, a quickly implemented nationwide contact tracing system. Dr. Chanarak highlighted the work of more than 1,000 teams across the country who he said had been able to investigate every single case, trace every contact, and monitor them for 14 days. James Wise, the former Australian ambassador to Thailand and author of Thailand, History, Politics, and the Rule of Law, was particularly impressed with the 1 million plus health volunteers who had earned their stripes during the HIV and MERS crisis. Speaking via Skype, he said that the predominantly female army of helpers showed that women should play a more prominent role throughout society, including government. 